welcome to 30 Minute Review. Uh, fuck. Beware of spoilers, I am Adam. On this very nice Tuesday morning. How's everyone out there doing? Um, take two, which is great, because then I fucked up immediately on this one. Because on take one, I was distracted by trying to back out um, of a parking spot. And it's not even so much just a parking spot, but it's like this long ass driveway out of a parking spot with like five other cars. Uh, yeah, so that was ordealish. Um, so today we're going to talk about The Anarchist, which is a. And then also I got a phone call from a telemarketer in the middle of recording. Um, we're going to talk about the show on HBO Max. Well, I think it's HBO. I think it's an HBO show that also goes to HBO Max. Um, and uh, it's called The Anarchist. I think I said that already. Um, and uh, it is about people who believe that they are anarchists, but not in the ultra-violent, like, we are going to overthrow the state kind of way. They are subtly looking to overthrow the state, and they've been uh, relocating themselves um, to kind of like a small colony in Acapulco. Um, so, it's a, it's a pretty interesting story, you know, when all is, uh, what's it called, when all is said and done. Um, to start out, I mean, there are quite a few things in this where you're like, I don't know why they're, because it's like, the, a lot of times the documentarians are trying to have gotcha moments. And that's one of the things that really struck me, is that, like, when you watch, like, the Flat Earth Society documentary Behind the Curve on Netflix, which I think we covered a few years ago, um, when you watch Behind the Curve, you get the feeling that the documentarians were trying to be like, look at how stupid these people are uh, for believing the Earth is flat. And it's like, okay, well, like, I, I get it. Like, I, like, I don't believe the Earth is flat. I, it, it, the Earth is not flat. Um... Like, these people are, you know, there. But rather than doing a thing about, like, what led them to this belief, like, what happened that led them to this belief system, the the anarchy one is kind of doing that. It's like, well, here's what happened that led to them believing that no state is the best option. And it's just presenting it as fact. And, and the fact of the matter is, these people who are being interviewed um, are not shy about saying things that make them not look the best um, or letting the documentaries look at things that are, you know, making them not look the best. Like, there are things where it's like, you know, they're not like, well, what can we do to look, make you look the worst? And they're like, well, actually, we're doing a book burning today. And if you want to open your show with a book burning, like, that's not what's going on here. It's like that, like, it's definitely one of those things where it's like, okay, so we are doing all of, you know, all this stuff and, and just, you know, record us. So, like, looking at, you know, the, there's the one guy who talks about he, he doesn't want his kids going to public school in the United States because indoctrination. And he's like, I'd rather send my kids to a porn set than to school. And I'm like, that, that's extreme. Like, and, and, and one of the things is, too, is the way they frame what happened to each of these people that led them to anarchism is really interesting. Because it's like, when we think of anarchism, we think of crazy people. But it's like, what this documentary does that the other one that, like, behind the curve didn't especially was, like, what happened in this person's life? that made them go X, Y, Z down the rabbit hole, and there we go, and, you know, yeah, a lot of it, and, and that's the common thing with all this stuff, for some reason, it always gets rooted in anti-Semitism, um, uh, to an extent, and, like, when you look at this one, it's, again, no different, unfortunately, where it's rooted in, like, you know, anti-Semitism, um, and when, when you, when you watch this documentary, you can kind, you can, you can gauge 
what happened to this person that led them to the belief that the state is wrong and all of that. A lot of it is narcissism. Don't get me wrong. A lot of it is narcissism. And it's them going like, you know, I'm 100% right 100% of the time. And because this, you know, it's it's basically a defense mechanism that's like, because this doesn't, you know, this, this contradicts my sense of self, it must be wrong. Um, so I'm going, like, the entire function of a state must be wrong. Like... The guy who's in charge, whose name I'm forgetting, he, um, he started, you know, he was a dot-com bubble. He, he had a website that, that went under as part of the dot-com bubble. And then that was the inciting incident that made him go, like, I, you know, we can't deal with, you know, having a state anymore. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting way to, to look at it. Um, there was this other couple that was, um, looking at, you know, what's it called, that was looking at, um, uh, they had severe jail time coming, because they had drug trafficking charges, and it's like, okay, so that is, you know, that is why they are, oh, fuck me, they're doing construction on the road, I forgot about this, I hate driving on the road that has been all torn up, I, I really can't stand it. Although, realistically, they should be the giant, you know, bump that they have in the middle of the fucking expressway for some reason. Should be gone by now. Um, so, yeah, so, what do we got? So, where, where was I? Um, the school bus doesn't know which direction it has on, that's reassuring. Um, so, like, they were looking for that, and then they were like, well, we're going to hop the border and go to Mexico to avoid criminal prosecution. And it's like, all right, all of this stuff kind of makes sense as to why, you know, why they did what they did, why they left home.
Marx's doctrine. Um, I got to take out my political science degree for a little bit today. Um, that is part of the problem with like the with like Marx's whole thing is that it's reliant on the fact that people will, you know, someone will step up to unify, you know, all the working class, and then use that momentum to, you know, revolt against the ruling class, and then take over, and then for communism to work in its perfect form, whoever that is has to step down. But if someone is there and they're going to unite the working class, inherently they have some aspiration. And inherently that person will not step down. Um, so, it, it's an interesting kind of, you know, thing where it's the same thing here. Where it's like, in order for this to work, um, and, and, and the problem is, like... I think inherently in a capitalistic society, which is what these people want to do, is the anarcho-capitalism. You cannot have that without some form of state. Like, you cannot have a capitalistic society without someone there above the people to mediate disputes. I mean, look, I, I totally understand and I totally get that these idealists who are doing this think that because everyone's in the society and everyone's out for themselves, everyone will, um, well, everyone will kind of do their, their own thing and not fuck with anyone else, but at the same time, in real life, with regulators and, and with government intervention, people still get fucked on a fairly regular basis. So... I don't know if that's, you know, if it's accurate to say that these, you know, that this kind of society would work. I mean, look, if you're going to sit here and say that, like, you know, communism never worked, I don't think a, a purely anarchist, no-state capitalist society could ever work. And I think that that's one of the things that they show. I would like to see them lay out their plan for it. That is something I would like to see them do in, in the later episodes. Um, and not just be like, look at these ass clowns. Like, I get it their ass clowns and you want to make them look you want to let them dig their own their own grave I totally understand that and I'm, and I'm, I'm kind of on board for that but the, the thing is I want to hear more of their doctrine I want to hear more of what they believe is the perfect society in their in their eyes what is it that they want and how does this society work because broadly it's been like we don't want a state but what does that look like in practice is the question I have if we got rid of the state and and, and we, we all decided to go anarcho-capitalist like starting tomorrow what does that look like how does life change for the average person and not just the positive which is what they're going to highlight obviously they're going to highlight what is going to look the best for, for them to get people on board but I want to be like okay so what is the, what's it called, what is the, I really hate when people put music in their car and actually because then I sit there and I'm trying to figure out what song it is, um, oh, I know what the song is, um, I'm in a, what's it called, no, I'm in a mid to late 2000s, uh, rock kind of movie today, um, Anyway, what was I saying? Um, I felt what I was saying. Oh, I want to see what this looks like. How, like, what does the society look like? Um, and I think the other thing that's kind of really telling about this, um, and, it, and it, it is one of those things, too, that's like, you know, we can talk about what they're doing. They've relocated to Mexico. And they're talking to some people who live there about what it's like to have these anarchists living in Mexico. And then you hear why they picked Mexico for their for their location. And the the locals are talking about it and it's like, yeah, they make no effort to like assimilate it or anything. Which I think is kind of telling too. Like it's the kind of thing that's like, oh, okay, so I know what this is now. Um and then 
you know, they get to, I think this episode got as far as, like, Tea Party, like, the 20, uh, 2008, 2009, uh, the Tea Party, which kind of arose and was the first batshit wing of the Republic, well, not the first batshit wing of the Republic Party, the most recent that would eventually give way to MAGA, but talking about that and how that influenced what was going on, well, it was 2015-ish, or 2016, yeah, it would have been around that time, so... Yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes. Because I, I do want to find out more about this. And, that, and ultimately, that's what documentaries should do. And if, if you're going to do a documentary like, look at these ass clowns, then what's the point? Because either you're going to get people who are watching it and they're going to be like, look, they're making us look stupid. Or you're going to get people like me who's like, oh, okay, they're ass clowns. And then this documentary further confirms they're ass clowns. So it's no point in making the documentary. I want to hear more about why, what... And how? Why are they anarchists? What do they want from a stateless society? And how do they plan to achieve said stateless society? That's what I want this to expose for me. And I I do not want to have to go down a fucking YouTube rabbit hole to explain this. Because I just got my YouTube recommendations to stop recommending uh, things I don't want. After I watched one fucking video. Um... Yeah, fucking conservatives are censored. You watch one video and that's all you get for months and months and months on end. Fuck off. Um, and then Google News, it's like every week there's like some other, like, they, they keep adding in, like I keep blocking sites that are, you know, like I, I like, you know, the Post and or the, the New York Post, the uh, um, Fox News, all that, you, you block them. And then, like, new sites pop up. And it's like, well, what makes you think, based on the other sites I've blocked, I want to see this bullshit now. Um, and Inside the Magic got blocked, too. Because they had a, a fucking post about CW that I was like, you can't do the bare minimum of research to understand this. And, like, because, like, they said, like, oh, at one point in the article they say, Black Lightning ran for two seasons. I'm like, that's not even right. Like, it, it like, like, it, like, if you say it ran for four seasons, like, that's a bad thing, number one, because a lot of shows don't go past three, um, if they get picked up at all, but, like, it, 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 it's just, it's just, it, like, the fact that that got through, and someone was like, here, this is what we're gonna do as our article, um, it, it's just insanity to me. Um, and no one picked up on it, like, oh, okay. Granted, you know, maybe the, maybe the editor, whoever submitted the article submitted to an editor, and the editor didn't know that, to be like, no, that's wrong. Because um, Inside the Magic should be, you know, Disney. Um, and Disney Parks specifically. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Um, what else was there? Uh, I think we'll wrap up there for today. Um, tomorrow, there is a new episode of Miss Marvel, so Thursday, we will have that, um, Friday, I will see where the crawdads sing, perhaps, Saturday, I will be at Life, Long Island International Film Expo, um, which will be fun, and then, uh, Sunday, I'll probably see another movie, I don't know what else comes out this week. Um, but also my theater, I think I've complained about this before, my theater is renovating, so they have, like, six screens closed, and you're like, well, why the fuck are you doing that in the middle of fucking July? And then on top of that, one of the screens that's closed is also a high-capacity, they're all high-capacity theaters, but especially the IMAX, which is a 250-seater, like, why the fuck are you closing that one down? Doesn't make sense to me. Um, but we'll wrap up there for today. We'll be back with more cool stuff as it happens, um, as always. So until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.